Welcome back guys. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys this wheel fitment tool that I designed in order to take out the guesswork and expensive trial and error process in finding that perfect wheel fitment. Of course, I'm going to show you guys how to assemble this tool, use it, and if you're interested in buying your own, just check out the link in the description down below. So the first thing we'll do is go over a quick description of all the parts that are included and what they do. So in the bottom left hand corner is your main mount. This is what gets mounted to the face where your wheel would get mounted and it's held on with your lug nuts or your wheel bolts. So down here in the bottom right we have the wheel diameter adjustment portion of the tool and you can see scribed on the face the different diameters of wheels that we can simulate using this tool. So 15 inches all the way through 20 inch wheels. Up here in the middle this is the adjustment bar for wheel width and offset. Up in the top right you have the two pieces that represent the essentially face of the wheel and the bead where the tire would actually sit. And so these will get mounted onto this piece here and I'll show you how to adjust those in a moment. Up here in the top left you have a tire simulator and so basically this is just going to represent the tire itself sitting on those wheel bead pieces and you'll have a certain range of adjustment to simulate a different height of a tire that you're going with. So essentially the aspect ratio of the tire. The next step is to assemble this tool and it's very easy to do. And depending on where you're from, you're gonna be using either metric or imperial hardware. And this tool will accommodate both. So if you're using metric hardware, you're looking for M6 socket head cap screws. And if you're using imperial hardware, you're using quarter inch socket head cap screws. Now, the only thing you're gonna need to do is if you do have a tap, you're gonna to wanna to run a tap through these two holes on the main mount. And if you're using, like I said, metric hardware, you're gonna to wanna to use a six millimeter tap. And if you're using imperial hardware, use that quarter inch tap to tap these two holes. If you don't have a tap, you may be able to get away with just cutting the threads with the bolts themselves. After all, these are pieces of plastic, but I still would recommend using a tap. And so you're gonna take your diameter adjustment tool and you're going to take the main mount and you'll notice that the holes will line up and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select the wheel diameter that you would like to simulate and so in this case we are going to use an example of a 19 inch wheel so you find your 19 inch marking and you insert the hardware and start threading it into those holes so after getting the bolts snugged down on this piece here, you're ready to move on to assembling your wheel width and offset bar. Now on the top of the bar, you'll see markings for various widths of wheels and anything from six inches all the way up to 12 inches in half inch increments. So that's what we can simulate using this bar. And you're gonna grab one of your wheel bead pieces here and you'll see to the far left hand side, there's a notch. And so we're gonna slip, you'll see the profiles slide over one another you're going to slip the wheel bead on right up to that one ink, the first increment, and you're going to tighten it down in this position. So with this piece lined up with the back notch and tightened down, this will represent the back face of your wheel. Next up, we have to set the front face. Now the front face is going to coincide with the notch that corresponds with the wheel width that you're looking to simulate. So we already set our 19 inch diameter and we're gonna simulate a 10 inch wide wheel. So we're gonna grab our front piece and in the same manner, we're going to slip it over this profile here. You can see they slide onto one another. I'm gonna move over to the 10 inch notch and we're gonna tighten this down so that lines up with the 10 inch notch right there. So with the front piece now tightened down, we can look at a section view of our 10 inch wide wheel. And to confirm that we've done this correctly, we can measure the width of the wheel and wheel width is measured from the inside faces of where the tire actually sits, not to the outside. And so this 10 inch wide wheel should measure 10 inches from inside to inside. And we can tape our, take our tape measure and confirm that this is the case. And you can see there that this does in fact line up with the 10 inch mark. And if you were to measure from outside to outside, you'll see that it does fall over 10 inches, which is correct. So the next piece of the puzzle is to attach your main mount to the width and offset bar. And this is just as easy as all the other steps where this piece conveniently slides on to the profile. 
And you're gonna wanna make sure that the heads of your bolts are facing the front side of your wheel on your width and offset bar. And so you can see here that this is how I have correctly assembled it. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to set your wheel offset. Now, the face of this main mount lines up perfectly with this face here that has just attached to your width and offset bar. And so this is essentially what's gonna set your offset. And so if you look closely on the side of this tool, you have another set of gradations here from again, six to 12 inches. And this is a representation of the center line of your wheel. And so if you're familiar with how wheels are measured and the offset is measured, you know that your offset is measured from the center line of your wheel. And so I've conveniently marked here for you the center line of each width. So if you had a six inch wheel, your six inch center line would fall right on this notch here. And if you had a 12 inch wide wheel, your wheel center line would fall in 12 inch. And so we have set up our tool here for a 10 inch wide wheel. And so my 10 inch notch is right here. That's the center line. And so now I can set up my offset from this line. So all I have to do is take a tape measure And if I know that I have, let's say for example, a 40 millimeter offset, I can butt my tape measure up to this face here and I have to line it up 40 millimeters from the 10 inch center line. And so I'm a little bit off right there, but that is essentially 40 millimeters right there from that 10 inch center line. And so I would just tighten this bolt down here and we've set this wheel up for a 19 inch diameter, a 10 inch wide rim with a 40 millimeter offset as soon as I tighten this down. And if I sort of hold this away from the camera, you can see here that this face, again, coincides with this face here. And so this is how you're measuring that wheel offset. So with the majority of the tool assembled, the remaining pieces are the tire simulators, but we're gonna get to those in a minute. We're actually gonna install this on the vehicle first and then we'll look at our tire size options. With the tool now assembled, it's time to get it onto the vehicle, but before we even address that, we need to figure out how we're gonna support the vehicle in order to ensure that all the components inside the wheel well are sitting relative to one another as if this vehicle was sitting on the ground. And to do that, you're gonna to need to take a bottle jack or a jack stand or something and support the vehicle underneath the lower control arm. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna load your suspension and it's gonna get your vehicle at the proper ride height as if it was sitting on the ground with the wheel off the car. And I can't stress enough how important it is to do this in a safe way. And you're gonna to wanna to use jack stands elsewhere under the car, but maybe they're just only a millimeter or so away from actually taking any sort of load away from the suspension. So if your vehicle does happen to fall, it won't fall very far, only a millimeter or so, and you'll be safe. Moving on to the installation of the tool, you can see here that I have the main mount mounted to the face of the rotor in the same way that your wheel would mount to the vehicle. And this main mount will accommodate five and four hole bolt patterns in many different sizes. And so in this case, my vehicle uses a five by 100 bolt pattern. And you can see, of course, that it fits. I used a couple of lug nuts and just snugged it down so everything's tight and it will not move. At this point, we can begin checking for fitment and interference. And if you remember earlier in the video, I mentioned that this piece up here represents the front lip of the wheel. The piece at the back represents the back lip of the wheel. And if you have this thing attached to a drive wheel, you're gonna to wanna to put your vehicle into neutral so that you can actually turn this whole wheel assembly. And if it's on a non-drive wheel, you're gonna to wanna to make sure no handbrake or any other braking device might be on that will prevent you from turning this through the full range of motion to look for any sort of interference. And like I said, you can just turn your wheel around all the way, making sure it doesn't hit anything, making sure your rim doesn't contact your lower control arm, any other control arm, your strut, or any other piece of suspension or bodywork, including your fenders. If you're running or trying to run a very flush uh, or a stretch and poke sort of look, then you're want, going to want to keep an eye out for your front lip of your wheel, making sure it doesn't contact your fender. 
And in this particular case, you can see here that this 10 inch wheel with this particular offset is actually going to contact my rear strut. And so I have a few different options at this point. I can use the bolt here on the offset and width bar. I can pull my offset to be a little less positive. So I had set it up earlier for a 40 millimeter offset. I can move it maybe to 25 millimeters. Of course, this is gonna bring my wheel out towards the outside of the vehicle, which may make the wheel stick out too far for my liking. And if that's the case, then of course, I can use this guy here and adjust the width, the overall width of the wheel. One thing to keep in mind is that if you're adjusting the overall width, then now you have to take a look at your offset again because your center line will have changed. And so if I adjust this from a 10 inch wide wheel to say a nine inch wide wheel, I have to look at my offset again because my center line changed. So you're gonna have to get your tape measure out and remeasure from your center line to determine your offset. And so now looking at this from a different perspective, from the back of the vehicle, you can see the front lip of the wheel would sit just about here. And if I take this straight edge and I put it up against the face of the wheel, you can see where it sits in relation to the fender. And it's probably sticking out about an inch if I had to guess. This car is not egregiously low, and therefore I do have a lot of space between the actual wheel and the fender, so I should definitely have enough room for a nice big meaty tire in there. Now, however, if you are running a lot closer to your fender, if your car is very, very low, you're gonna want to use the tire simulator to see just about how far your tire is away from maybe your fender or even the inside of your wheel well liner. Looking at the tool from this perspective, you can see now that I have installed the tire simulator and it installs with one bolt. There's a slotted hole to adjust this piece to go from representing a low profile tire to something a little bit taller. Now, in order to figure out how low or how tall, you're going to have to do a little bit of math and there's really no way around this, but essentially your reference point is this flat face here. And this flat face represents the bead seat of the wheel. And so for simplicity's sake, if you had a 20 inch wheel, this would be your reference point. So it would be 20 inches from this bead seat directly down to the opposite side of the wheel if you could extend a tape measure from one side to the other. That would measure 20 inches. And so tires are governed by three numbers. The first one being your section width in millimeters. The second one being your aspect ratio as a percentage of that section width. And the third number being the diameter in inches of the wheel that it would fit. And so if we were using an example of a 20 inch wheel, and let's just say we had a 305, 25, 20 wheel, that would be your tire section width of 305 millimeters your aspect ratio of 25, which just means 25% of that section width. So it'd be 25% of 305. And off the top of my head, 25% of 305 would be somewhere in the 75 millimeter range. And so what you would need to do is you would need to figure out the overall diameter of the tire from those numbers. And to do that, you need to do a little bit of math, like I said. And so if we were just, if I was just doing this off the top of my head, I would take that 75 millimeters and that would be the height of my tire uh, from here to that reference point. And basically I could just measure that out. So I could measure out 75 millimeters from here to here and adjust this piece to figure out my exact uh, height of my tire. And then of course, spin the whole tool around and make sure it doesn't interfere with anything. So the last thing I wanna talk about here is the inner barrel of the wheel. Now, unfortunately, I have found from my experience that not all wheel barrels are made equal. And so they're not measured in the same way that your uh, wheel width is measured from the inside lips of the wheels or your wheel diameter is measured from that bead seat. The inner barrel is a little bit different. Some wheel manufacturers have thicker barrels than others, depending on the manufacturing process, such as let's say flow forming, probably allows them to run a thinner barrel because the material is stronger and it saves on weight. So this uh, wheel offset 
and width adjustment piece does not represent the inner barrel of the wheel. So if you were to spin this tool around and you found that it makes contact with, let's say, the brakes on the inside of your wheel, somewhere in this position, this does not necessarily mean that you will have interference between the barrel of your wheel and your brakes. You're probably gonna to have to look closer at the specs of the wheel from the wheel manufacturer and determine uh, if that's gonna be the case. This tool does not do that measurement for you. And so just be careful with that. It's uh, one limitation of the tool and it's a limitation just in general due to the nature of the different types of wheels that are out there. So that's all there is to it guys. Overall, I think this thing is pretty easy to use, but if anything was unclear, be sure to ask any questions in the comment section down below. Just a reminder that you can check the link in the description for where to pick one of these up for yourself. And you might be able to share it between a few different friends for all of you guys to get that perfect wheel fitment. Thanks again for watching and thanks for your support.